The next thing we're going to do in chapter two is talk about the unit circle definition of our trigonometric functions. A reminder or an initial look for some of you is the equation of a circle with the radius of one is x squared plus y squared equals one. So any x or y that meets those conditions will be a point that is on this circle and it has a radius of one. So if the radius of one, this point would have a coordinate of one, zero, zero, one, negative one, zero, and zero comma negative one. And if I draw any angle in standard position, I'm gonna call this theta, that's drawn in standard position. It has the coordinates, I'm gonna call that a point P, well, if I draw that, I can think about that right triangle. Well, this one right here is the y distance. Well, the y distance is up, is, this is one. So the y distance is just the sine of my angle. And this x distance right here is the cosine of my angle. So if you are on a unit circle, the x-coordinate of any point on the unit circle is the cosine of that angle, and the y-coordinate on the unit circle is the sine of that angle. Okay, and that's as long as you are in standard position. Okay, so th three examples to help us out with this. 2.8 says the cosine of 90 degrees. So first thing I need to do is I need to draw the angle. It's here. And then label the coordinates of that point. Well, the coordinates of that point are 0, 1. So the cosine is 0, and the sine is 1. Okay, another example, negative 180 degrees. Start here, rotate clockwise this time. Identify the point that's on the unit circle and label its coordinates. That would be negative 1, 0. So the cosine is negative 1, and the sine is 0. Next example, 7 pi halves. Okay? Remember, going halfway around is 1 pi. So that's pi halves is 90 degrees. So let's just count them. 1 pi half, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven pi halves. Okay, draw the point on the unit circle and label its coordinates. Its x coordinate is zero, its y coordinate is negative one. Zero, negative one. So cosine is zero and sine is negative one. Okay, so for the, any quadrantal angle that I give you, okay, that's one that lies on one of the x-axis or y-axis, you should be able to immediately draw your unit circle and come up with the coordinates for that point to come up with the sine and cosine for those angles. Okay, these are trig functions. So trig functions have input values and then they have output values, okay? I can put any number I want into the sine and cosine functions. I can put any number I want to into the sine and cosine functions. But notice, whatever number I put into the sine and cosine functions, let's start with sine first. The smallest value I get from sine is negative one. The biggest value I get for sine is one. No matter where I'm at on that circle, my outputs for my sine function have to fall between negative one and one. Same thing for my cosine function. So the domain of the sine of theta is equal to the domain of the cosine of theta, which is all real numbers. I can put any number I want to into the sine and cosine function. The range of the sine function is equal to the range 
of the cosine function, which is equal to negative one to one, inclusive. Okay, so that's a key point that you should re recognize, is that sine and cosine cannot get bigger or smaller than negative one or one. Okay, so we did basic um, quadrantal angles. Well, the next thing we need to talk about is that let's say one isn't quadrantal. Okay, so that would be like example 2.11. As after I erase the board, I'll draw to to 11. Okay, it's already worked out for you, but I will do it again. Okay. It says, say theta is an angle in the second quadrant. So I'm going to just put any old angle there, an angle in the second quadrant, such that the cosine is negative three-fifths, and that the sine is four-fifths. Okay, there's my theta. Okay. What quadrant does theta plus pi live in? Okay, so that remember this is quadrant one, two, three, and four. Remember that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees, which is a half circle. So pi plus 180 would be a half circle away, which is going to be quadrant four. Okay, that's the first part of the answer. Okay. These two triangles are congruent. This triangle right here and this triangle right here. They're congruent. Well, I know that length is one. Okay. Well, if this coordinate right here is negative three-fifths, well, that means I've got to go over this way three-fifths. If this distance up here is four-fifths, that means I need to go down four-fifths. So that would be the coordinates of that. So that's the coordinates of P plus pi, or theta plus pi. P of theta plus pi is that. So the cosine of theta plus pi is three-fifths. The sine of theta plus pi is negative four-fifths. Okay. Example 211. What they want to know is, okay, so for 211, takes us on to 212. 212 says, hey, I start out with the same initial conditions. I've got some quadrant two angle that has the coordinates negative three fifths, four fifths. Okay. It says, what quadrant does negative theta lie in? Well, if that's theta, negative theta would rotate this way. Okay, so this is in quadrant one, two, three. Okay, and now what it wants to know is it wants to know P of negative theta, cosine of negative theta, and sine of negative theta. Well, what I need to do is I need to label the points. Well, let's look at this. My x coordinate is going to be the same. And my y coordinate, instead of going up, I'm going down, so it would be a negative 4 fifths. So cosine is the x coordinate, and sine is the y coordinate. Compare them to the initial things. Cosine of that negative angle is exactly the same thing as the cosine of the original angle. Sine of a negative angle is negative of the sine of the original angle. 
And we're going to see this when we talk about some trigonometric identities. Okay. There is a sh shortcut that some students like to use is if you should notice that if I have the same reference angle, which is this one, this one, if I draw it here, this one, and this one, where all four of these are the same reference angles, if I remember all students take calculus, where I look at the first initials, A-S-T-C, it tells me which trig functions have which S-I-G-N sign. So here, of my basic sine, cosine, and tangent, cosine is positive and sine is positive. Here, only sine is po and tangent positive. Here, only sine is positive. So cosine is negative, tangent is negative, sine is positive. Here, tangent's positive, the rest are negative. And here, cosine is positive, and the rest are negative. <clears throat> I don't really need you to memorize that because you should know, based off of over here, cosine is an x, sine is a y. So if you know when your x's are positive, that's when cosine is positive. When you know when your x's are negative, that's when cosine is negative. Y is positive, sines are positive. Y is negative, sines are negative. And tangents are when the sines are the same. The sines are the same. Tangent's positive when the sines are the same. So tangent is positive in quadrant one and in quadrant three. So that's how you're able to take that into account. So the next thing they do before example 2.13 is they formalize our negative angle properties. Okay. Formalize our negative angle properties. Cosine, so these are negative angle properties. Cosine of negative theta is equal to the cosine of theta. Okay? And what this does is this makes this an even function. My definition of what an even function is, that makes it an even function, which means it is a reflection. Across the y-axis. So when I, if I were to graph this function, it would just be a reflection of itself across the y-axis. Sine of a negative angle is equal to negative sine of the original angle, which by definition makes this an odd function. And if I were to graph this, this is a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these facts and one of our memorized triangles from the previous section to find the sine and cosine of the angle 3 pi fourths. So first thing I'll do is I'll draw the circle. 2 pi fourths, 3 pi fourths. So this angle right here is pi fourths. Okay, that's one of my memorized triangles. Okay. So I remember it, that it is 1, 1, square root of 2, all over the square root of 2's. So that length is 1. So my angle here 
Oh, that thing here is 1 square root of 2 over 2 square root of 2 over 2. Well, I need the coordinates of this point. Well, if I'm going square root of 2 over 2 this way, it's negative square root of 2 over 2. If I'm going square root of 2 up, it's square root of 2 over 2. From that point, I can get cosine of 3 pi fourths is negative square root of 2 over 2, and the sine of 3 pi fourths is equal to positive square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Um, so that's a way to do it using the unit circle. That was example 2.13. 2.14. In 2.15, we're using special 30, 60, 90 triangles. And I really don't need, okay, so 2.14, it says find the quadrant and draw the angle for negative 60 degrees. Well, that would be here. Okay, so this is negative 60. So that is in quadrant four. Draw the appropriate special triangle and then find the sine and cosine of negative 60. So I said for a special right triangle, for the 60 degree here, the short side is one, hypotenuse is two, the long side is the square root of three. Divide everything by two to normalize it, okay? So this length is square root of 3 over 2, but it's going down. This length right here is 1 half, and it's in the positive direction. So the cosine of negative 60 degrees is equal to 1 half. The sine of negative 60 degrees is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. The second way that I could have done this problem is, hey, it's negative 60, so just draw the 60 degree triangle, and I know that the cosine of a negative angle is the same as the cosine of the original angle. The cosine of the original angle is 1 half, so the cosine of the negative is 1 half. I know the sine of a negative angle is equal to the negative of the sine of the original angle. The sine of my 60 degree angle is square root of 3 over 2, so the sine of negative 60 would be negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so that's another way that you could reason out. The last example that is on this um, subsection is I want to do 7 pi 6. Well, halfway around is 6, 6, so a little bit more would be 7, 6. Okay, so what that did, did for me, if I redraw that triangle right here, this is going to be pi sixths, this is pi thirds, pi six is 30, that's 60, and if I do my sides, I have the exact same relationship here, the short side goes down one half, the long side is the square root of three over two, and hypotenuse is one. So I need to label the coordinates. Well, I'm going this way to the left, so that would be negative square root of 3 over 2. I'm going down, so that would be negative 1 half. So the cosine of 7 pi 6 is equal to negative root 3 over 2. And the sine of 7 pi 6 is equal to negative 1 half. These little angles that I've been drawing here are what are, ref what are called reference angles. And a reference angle, is, this is assuming that you're in standard position, is the shortest angle from the x-axis to the terminal side. Okay. 
So here, from the x-axis to the terminal side, that would be pi fourths. X-axis to the terminal side would be 60 degrees. X-axis to the terminal side is pi sixths. Notice that every reference angle is positive, and every reference angle um, has to be between zero and 90 degrees. So I'm gonna do a couple examples of those. Reference angle problems. Example 216, what is the reference angle for five pi sixths? I have my circle. Halfway around is 6 pi 6, so almost halfway around would be 5 pi 6. Okay, this is 6 pi 6, which is pi. So this angle from here to here is just going to be pi 6. Okay, 2.0, that was 216. 2.17. It wants the reference angle for 17 pi thirds. Okay, halfway around is 3 thirds. So I'm going to go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17. If I went all the way back around, that would have been 18 pi thirds. So 18 minus 17 is just going to be pi thirds for my reference angle. Okay, if I know what the reference angle is, and I know my special right triangles, their sines and their cosines, and I know what quadrant something falls in, I immediately can write down the basic trig functions and then pick the appropriate S, I, G, and sine. Okay, so I want the 2.18, I want to find the cosine and sine of 5 pi 6. Well, 5 pi 6, my reference angle was pi 6. Pi 6, pi thirds. If I know my memorized triangle, I have 1 half, 1, square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so the cosine is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. Sine is going to be 1 half. But now I need to take into account that this is a quadrant 2. Okay, all students take calculus. Quadrant 2, the sine is positive and the cosine is negative. So that's how you can use reference angles and then that little trick. Okay. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to do cosine and sine of 17 pi thirds. Okay. Well, pi thirds, the, so let me draw, um, my reference angle we said is going to be pi thirds. Okay, so pi thirds, pi sixths. So this is one half, one square root of three over two. Notice I, if I'm doing pi thirds, the x coordinate is one half, the y coordinate square root of three over two. This is in quadrant four. So all students take calculus, the cosine is positive and the sine is negative. So that is a second way that I can get this angle. <clears throat> okay. Um, sine and cosine only depend on the terminal side of the angle. So coterminal angles, anything that's coterminal have, those coterminal angles have the same sine and the same cosine um, of each other. 
So that is it for our first part of the um, talking about the unit circle. Again, my recommendation is you do practice problems, make sure you get the right answers, and then you do, then you do the homework problems. Um, final recommendation for everybody is that you become comfortable of finding the coordinates for every point for our special triangles on our unit circle, okay? The first points you should automatically get are the quadrantal points. Okay. Then I think about my 45 degree angles. Both of these from my special triangles were the square root of two over two, square root of two over two. So again, I can just write those numbers down. If I know quadrant one, I know them all. Because now once I get them all written down, let me make sure that's more like a 45. I worry about the signs, both positive, sine positive, so cosine's negative, both negative, cosine positive, so sine's negative. So this is pi fourths. If I do pi six reference angles, which we have here, which are my 30 degree angles, that distance is pi six or 30 degrees. It's going to be square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Both positive. Negative square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. This cosine is negative. Both negative. Negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. And square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. And then the last one we have is we have our pi thirds. So pi thirds is square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Negative square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. Both negative. Negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. And then sine is negative. Square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Okay, this, if you know these relationships, and you can immediately write this stuff down. If, again, if you know quadrant one, you know the other quadrants. You just have to do the little trick I showed you. All students take calculus to figure out the signs, S-I-G-N signs of those. So this would be one pi thirds, two pi thirds, three pi thirds, four pi thirds, five pi thirds. Gives you the sine and cosine for those angles. Um, Part of your benchmark test for college algebra is the unit circle. For high school algebra two, once you pass the unit circle um, mini quiz, which does not count directly towards your grade, once you pass that, I will let you use the unit circle for any test. If you do not pass the little mini quiz, you cannot um, use the unit circle on a test. Basically, once you show me you know what the values are, then I'll let you use it on a test so you can come up with the answers more readily. So again, all of this unit circle stuff is driving us, okay? These are some of our memorized cosines and sines for our various trig angles based off of the unit circle definition. 